Hey, so we're doing the first uh, quarter show Q&A. We're going to be tackling questions that come in, and uh, and so we'll we'll kick it off with the first question. So the first question we have here that came in just now is, what do you do to handle clients who are cheap? As in, they can pay more, and even the best option for them is more, uh, but they have sort of economized at all times mindset. Yeah, so on, on that question, there's a couple things I, I would look at right away. Uh, number one, is it the right person? First and foremost, you have to un understand, is this the right person? Are you dealing with the right person? Is this the decision maker, power, whatever you want to say, but do you have the right person? That's, that's number one. Uh, I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, that's step one. If you do have the right person, you know, then, then you have to get off selling the product and get on selling the solution. Like what problem are you trying to solve? And that person has to see the value in that. In order to get the price that you want, value has to exceed the price in their mind. You have to, value has to be higher than price in their mind. Um, and you wanna push the price as high as you can up to value. So when you start looking at that, um, in their mind, price is above value, right? And so, and they're like this with everything, there's there's a couple things you can do. You can obviously go and just move on and go find a different buyer and somebody that fits what you would consider to be your right target audience, your right target public, however you want to phrase that. Um, you can start zeroing in and define the audience that you want to go after that works best for your company. So that's obviously the no sale, not going after a sale with that person if this is the kind of customer that you don't want to take on. You know, if you don't want a, a pool of customers that are cheap and haggling you on every step and you believe your, your value and what you sell is higher, perhaps go in and, and pivot and start going after clients that can afford what you do, see the value in what you do, and want to spend in that. Having said that, it's up to you to not sell a product. So if you're selling, um, if you're selling a, a video or you're selling graphic design or you're selling a, a service or whatever, that's not the thing that you're selling. The thing that you're selling is you're solving a problem for that customer and you're selling something other than that just physical product. For us, we do, you know, we, we do a lot of video work. Video is not what I ever consider that we sell. We, we do a lot of video work. I'm always and assuming and looking at the problem that we're solving is communication related to the audience and related to accomplishing a sales or training or you know sales or training goal really in some capacity so I, I'm really selling communication to help move the needle um, you have to look at what is the intangible thing that you're selling um, that's not the physical product if you've dropped it down to well you know I do I do XYZ and that's what I'm selling you're you're gonna commoditize who you are and, and, and what you're selling and then you're going to get essentially haggled on price. So don't commoditize yourself. In fact, I, I did a, a LinkedIn video and we're going to, I'm going to have Spencer include the link maybe in the, um, in the, in the comment on this, on this video. So you can see that about not commoditizing yourself. That's super important, but you need to build value. You, ha you have to build value and, and figure out how do you overcome that? How, how do you solve a problem for them? build value in their mind so they can clearly see that you know what you're what you're selling what you're delivering exceeds the value of what they have to spend so whatever that thing is right yeah and as robert mentioned number 1 and the the, the question came in and i did ask hey do you have the decision maker and the person assured me yes now here's something to think about when you're thinking do i have the decision maker small to medium business very 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 often c level ceo is the decision maker you might be dealing with someone who's a little lower down the org the org board and you think you have the decision maker because you have the person who's going to use your product that's almost never the decision maker actually even someone who says yes i sign yes here's the credit card they they have to go somewhere else. So if you haven't built up enough value with the actual decision maker, then you're going to run into a snag. Like, may as well flip a coin. How often are you going to run into a stop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's very important. People on, on a quick glance will be like, oh yes, this, this is the decision, decision maker, but it, it really has to be the right person. And you want to make sure, number one, that you're selling the right person. The number one thing 
that blocks salespeople, certainly in B2B setting, is selling the wrong person. Yeah, and then the other thing you pointed out was, of course, building the value. And and recently, I mean, there are occasional, as, as Richter has gone bigger and bigger, and our clients have gotten like global and multi-billion dollar, very large, some of, some other, some, sometimes folks will reach out and go, um, uh, hey, I, I, we need a solution for this. We're trying to accomplish this in the marketplace. And we go, great, here's what you need to do. Du, 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 well, steps one through 10. And that's the solution. And I, I'm not, I can't just like, I can't just sell you a single a video and maybe a deck and like pretend that that's gonna solve your problem. So as a salesperson, you really have to with integrity in and without gouging clients, give them a real solution and then, and then go over why that's the real solution and why something mm-hmm. less really isn't the real solution because then you can take their money and they can wind up disappointed that's fine, and then you don't have a repeat client, and then yeah. there's a bit of a you know muddy, muddiness you know between in the relationship. Yeah, and the other thing on that point too, and this is more on your side, is like you have to make sure that your product, the product that you're selling, is fantastic, because you got to be able to be self-critical sometimes and look at it too and go, if it's not flying off the shelf, if you're not, if it's not, if it's not going, get critical. Look at the product. Is it great? Is it great? Is it great right now? You know, and don't be biased. Look at it. It might not be. You know, honestly, take a look at it. If it's not great, make it great. Make the product great, the thing that you're selling. Have your examples. Make it incredible, right? Start there. Then build value for the customer. Before they actually build value for the customer, make sure you have the right customer, right? Do you have the right customer that suits your business? Like my immediate answer where, where, where I'm at right now, looking at that, thinking if I'm, do I want to go after customers that are that way, that are cheap and gonna haggle me on the price all the time and don't see value in what I'm selling? Is that my customer? Is that the customer I wanna go after all the time? Or would I rather profile my customer to really look at what, what's the ideal customer for us, pursue that, what problem am I solving for them, Where's the value? Build the pitch around the value on what we're doing. Show how I solved the problem. Do amazing work, solve the problem, deliver amazing work, and then find more customers just like them. It's not always a great move to take on any customer that has a, has a checkbook, right? If you have, if you're, you're just taking on any customer at any time, not a great idea. Um, I, I, I would really zero in on understanding your exact target public, understanding your exact audience that you wanna go after, and focus on that and build because that's rocket fuel. When you zero in on the customer and you know your customer cult, don't just take anybody who needs the product or, or quote unquote needs the product or service that you sell. Now, this person, if you start looking at your, your customer base and it's all fragmented and scattered, not a great thing, right? Be more strategic, focus on the ones that are more aligned with your, cust- with, with your company and with what you do. Make the product amazing, make the experience amazing, show how you bring value, solve a problem, and then just do it again and again and again and continue to get better and better and better. Hopefully that helps. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna be tackling more, more questions that they come up, but. Uh, yeah, if you have questions, put them down yeah, in the comments below. Leave them below. You can email us directly or whatever. Yeah, we'd love to tackle more. Thanks. Thanks.